Hi there, it's Mark Sebastian, founder of Option Pit, and this is the live vault demo by us. Uh, reminder again, this is for education purpose only, should be considered best advice, options have risk. Um, and, you know, our goal in the next 20 minutes or so is to walk through exactly how the live vault product works. And then I'm happy to actually show you how some of our sheets work as well, um, just in, in conjunction. So I want to start with the live all screen. All right, so you can change. So we're going to start with kind of the setup. So you've got all these main menu bars here. So you have the dark, which I like. You have gray, and then you have a light, which I guess my understanding is pe some people that have some vision issues, this is easier for them to see. I personally like the dark because I think um, the colors pop more. All right, now, when you log into Live All, you're gonna start on this screen. This is your market screen. And it's gonna kind of tell you, uh, give you a snapshot of the option market as a whole. All right, on the right is gonna be what SPX options are, uh, what the SPX is doing. This is a day chart of SPX. And then here are the different types of kind of day traded volatilities that they have. January, February, March. I can switch this to one day if I want. And then you can see what implied volatility is doing for the different months. All right, and these are gonna be the main months so otherwise known as the serial months, not uh, the, uh, you know, the, the like every little weekly contract. These are the Jan AM expiration, Feb AM, March AM expiration. To the left is volume by exchange. Really not useful to you, but you know, it's interesting to note where everything is. Here's Miami, Pearl, PhilEx, SIBO. You can kind of see kind of what exchanges are doing what, where there's liquidity. And you see really the best liquidity is on the SIBO. Down below is a trade monitor, and this is going to be every single trade. I can sort by when it went up. So end of day, start of day. I can sort by symbol by the option, uh, by the quantity. So I can go, I wanna see the biggest trades or the smallest trades. Here's all those, the smallest trades, here's the biggest trade. So the biggest trade that went up in terms of contract size all day was in VNQ. And it was the, they traded almost 65,000 65 puts for a dime in one trade. And then you can see the exchange that went up on. The condition, now these conditions are interesting. Auto execution means it was done as a electronic trade. Spread means it was done in conjunction with something else. So for instance, this 40, these 49,000 lots in JD.com were all the same trade. It appears they did a straddle swap. They sold the January straddle 49,000 times, the 24 straddle, and bought the March. You can see the market at the time of the trade, what the implied volatility of the trade and where the underlying price was at the time. So a lot of useful information, and I can set filters and things like that on it if I want, you know. So I can make this, you know, different different stuff for the symbol. The one I think is important is the quantity. So I can sort the quantity. Like, do I really need to see every one lot? No. So what I'll do is I'm going to put greater than or equal to a thousand. 
And now, oh, I'm, I set this to less than or equal to, whoops. So now here's all the trades that went up today that are over a thousand contracts. All right. And then over here, again, because I set the quantity filter, now on the left down here, in my this is like my news ticker. It's going to give me every trade over a thousand contracts. And then every kind of important piece of little news information I might like. So, for instance, here's a trade in AMD of uh, 5,500 lot straddle in March. And then there's also some information like, hey, um, you know, VXX had a 52 week low implied volatility today for its 30 day IV. So this is all like market monitoring news. All right, now, next, and this is the part I, you know, I use a lot. This is my symbol, so I can type in whatever symbol I wanna look at here, SPY or you know, Microsoft. All right, and then down here is my watch list, where I'm seeing the last, how much it's changed, how much it's up from a percentage standpoint, what its implied volatility at 30 days to expiration is, and how much that's changed today. If you want to add something to your list, so for instance, I don't have Microsoft on my list. I just click this blue button right here, and now Microsoft is on my watch list. If I want to get it off, I just click this little garbage can. So I don't need to see Nike. But the nice thing is I can add Nike back in, right back there. So this is what we open up to. I do look at this. It's one I like. The next tab is time and sales. And what this is going to give you is only trades and weapon Nike. So if you have a stock that you really follow, so like my friend Micah, Lamar, good dude, he's the Apple trader. That's what he calls himself, Apple trader. I like Apple. All right. Um, he might just pull up Apple, and then he'd be able to look at every trade that went up in Apple. Now, I would probably go in, and again, greater than or equal to 250. I only want to see the real trades in Apple. Nope. Let me get the right one there. So these are all the trades in Apple that were over 250 contracts that went up today. So I can scroll down and, and see if there was anything interesting today. Hmm. All right now within this, I can sort by the time. So right now I've got sorted biggest to smallest, but maybe I want to see when all these went up. So here's from end of day. You know, we're on the 24-hour scale here. So here's end of day down to the beginning of the day. So the last large trade that went up today was a Jan 2020 210 call for $2.25. Now, I want you to see something. So remember, I can see the market. So the market at the time was 214, 231. Now, there's no way of knowing for sure, but what do I think type of trade this probably was? Means probably a buy. If it's 
red, then you know it was a sale. If it's green, then they know it was a buy by the customer. If it's white, that means it's mid-market. Nice screen. Very helpful, something I use. Trade tape. These are trades that are on my watch list. So again, I'm gonna filter this to 250. Mm. So now I'm only looking at trades on my watch list. So my watch list here, so you can see what's on my watch list, right? Let me get rid of a rig. It's not one I watch. So now I'm just seeing, I'm gonna add SPX here. So now I'm only gonna see stuff that traded in my watch list that's over 250 contracts. This is a great screen just to let run. All right, this is a great screen just to let's sit and open and run. It really is. So now I'm able to, to watch this. Now, one thing you can do if you have a lot of screens, you could do a pop out. And now it becomes its own web page. This is something you can have running on your computer just to see all the trades going on. You know, personally, I run it so it runs by time. That way you're seeing the newest trade at the top. It's what you want to see anyway. So the last big trade of the day in my watch list was the Triple Q March 170 call. Customer bought 225, uh, 4,400 puts, calls, excuse me, for $2.25. And it appears he sold stock against it. So this has been Delta neutral and or one up with stock. That's what buy right made. Buy right means it was tied to stock. Kind of a neat little thing. Next on my list, fundamentals. Now obviously the SPX isn't gonna have fundamentals. Right, it doesn't do that. But let's pull up JP Morgan. They had earnings today. Here's everything you need to know about the company. What's it worth? What's it worth? What's its market cap? How many people work there? Who's in charge? All kinds of fun stuff. And there's actually a link right to the homepage if you want to view what's uh, view their homepage. All kinds of key stats for fundamental analysis. All right. Uh, question was, what are the white color trades? Those are trades that are mid-market, where we're not 100% certain whether they were buyers or sellers. You have to look a little closer to figure out what it is. All right. So fundamentals is not one I use a lot. I'm gonna I'm gonna get to the ones I use a lot in a little bit. Next one I don't use a lot, um, and certainly a lot less are the ones over here. I don't use a lot of alerts. I do like calendar, because what it's gonna tell, calendar is gonna tell me everything that's going on, like ya the Yahoo calendar. Alerts are if I set price alerts. You can, this is maybe something you wanna use. All you do, you pull it out and set, hey, I wanna know when this thing hits a price. All right, now, let's go back to stock charts. So stock chart, um, this is one I don't use very much. It's calls and puts. The green is calls, the red is puts. And that's what the volume looks like. 
down here is another one I do not use very much. It's kind of the spread between HV and IV. These bars are stock volume. All right, so now let's get to what I actually do use a lot. The top is a stock chart. Right now I have it set to candles. See, type candlestick. But I can switch it to area, line, hollow candle, um, kg, you know, all kinds of points and figure charts, you name it. I like candles, that's what I leave at. Um, the red and blue lines are the 200 day moving average and the 50 day moving average. If I click here, you can kind of see them. The, the little E's are when their earnings are. All right, see this in the corner, I can actually expand it so it's just the stock. All right, so I can change my bar intervals. I can change my, this is one I, I, you know, I can change, I can go out five years. I can go out all, about 10 years. One year is kind of the standard that, it, that when you open it, it'll look like. And I can go, to, I just want to see the last 10 days. Now the bars, you can see, are one minute. I can change that to whatever I want, one hour. Indicators. I can add moving averages, simple movings, weighted, you name it. Volume, stochastics, I don't care. I'm not much of a stock guy, but I can add anything I want in here. MACD, whatever. And indicators. Now here is ones I do use. I can add different vol studies. I don't want that. HVIV comparison. That HVIV differential that I deleted, that's right here. IV by delta. Kind of fun one. You can see what the IV looks at, like at different deltas. IV by money, money mint, and then some custom SKU stuff. The one I do look at, especially for indexes, indexes is SKU indexes. This is my normal chart looks like this. This is my normal chart that I'm looking at when I'm watching live all. This bottom is actually telling me how steep or flat SKU is. Pretty nice. All right, now the most important chart on my stock chart. Now, I normally look at it like this, but I want to expand it so you can actually see what's going on. The red line is the implied volatility of 30 days to expiration for JP Morgan. The blue is 20 day historical volatility. I can add just about anything I want to look at. I can actually even compare symbols. So I'm going to take, turn off, you can see I turned off HV. But let's say I want to see what Citigroup vol at 30 days expiration looked like relative to JP Morgan. There you have it. And when I shrink, it'll be right there. I want to get rid of it, just turn it off. It's gone. Next time I open Live All, this little thing will be gone too, or I can just click trash. Pretty nice. Next thing I want to look at is skew. And this is literally a skew chart. So JP Morgan. None. 
February. This is February implied vol. Now, I can change the time. I can change the percentage. One thing I do Here's the implied volatility of all. I can change the options. So I only want to see the implied volatility of FEB options. Here, I'll go to something deeper. I'll, this is the implied volatility of all options in JP Morgan that are over 25 cents that expire in January 2020. And what I like about this is it gives me a visual look at where things might be mispriced. I can, and in the corner, you can see the different strikes. Next is earning analysis. Earnings analysis. And what you can see is how much did the stock move? How much was the market expecting it to move? This is incorrect. Let me pull up, see if I can find one that's, uh, let me pull up City. I can see, okay. The blue is how much they were guessing. The green is how much it moved. And then you get a visual look at, you know, does it tend to move more or less than where implied volatility is pricing it? Green means it went up, red means it went down. It went down. Pretty fascinating. All right, the next tab I need VIX for. Remember, SIBO is a VIX product. Or VIX is a SIBO product, so is live all. So they did some work to create things for VIX futures. So I can see where VIX futures are all pricing here. The volume, the high, the low, you name it. And then what I like, this is the one I like, VIX futures term structure. So now I can actually see what the curve looks like. This is, I like this view. You know, one of the things we normally will tell people is go to VIX central. All right. So this looks more dramatic. This looks more like what the curve actually looks like. I really like this view. And then the green is the cash. And I can change it. Do I want mid? The last trade price. Do I want the open? The high? And the low. So at the low, look at where the big futures were. Wow. I can also add the weeklies. I do not, because they don't trade very much. All right. Now, I want to show you the two screens I use the most. I want to start with the options screen. And this is your, your classic options montage. Again, on the right, you can see I've got my scanner. And I can adjust it for price time, you know, I don't want to see I don't want to see inexpensive options. But this is going to be every kind of ticker trade. I can extend that out and you can see here I can adjust the quantity again. This is, a, if you're going to use this screen a lot, which I do, in particular, I would make sure to adjust this one so you're only seeing the stuff that you want to see. Now you know every trade's over 250 contracts. Up top is kind of an aggregate value of every option in VIX. So here's Jan, Jan 23, Jan 30. 
And you can see what its implied volatility is. Change in implied vol. The symbol for the month, if it's got a future, and the future's price. JP Morgan doesn't have the futures price and the options change, but you can see with the change in implied volatility. And if I want to make it bigger, which I do, I'll put it like that. Now, if I want to go to directly to a month, all I have to do is click here. Look, click on top. Now I'm in looking at February. And I can see what's happened in February. Where are things pricing? This updates real time. What's the current volume? And what's the open interest? If I want to get a little closer look, I can click on the strike. And it'll actually pull up where everything is trading with that strike, including some historical pricing that I can go back and look at. This is gonna have everything that you need to look at. And you can adjust things. I can go in here and say, I don't wanna see all, I just wanna see at the money plus five strike. There are other things I can do in here. But that's base, That's kind of what I'm looking at when I'm looking at the montage. Now the final thing is the pro scanner. And this has all kinds of different scans I can look at. And I'm not going to spend the time to look through all of them, but I will point out the ones I like to look for. I'm always looking at annual highs, annual lows, exploding IVs, imploding IVs. And then from an order flow standpoint, I look for high call volume, high put volume, largest put to call, largest call to put. Why do I like lar largest call to put and largest put call? Because I'll find stuff where it doesn't trade very much and there's a lot of, of stuff happening. So take a look. C CCJ, Kane Co Corp. Who knows what the heck that is? It's done 30,000, look, it did 29,000 calls and only 1,000 puts. So this might be one I click on, and you can see if I click on it, it'll come up here. And then I can go into the options, and I can look and see what traded. I don't know what I did there, but that was not on purpose. And it looks like some backdated calls went up. The June 16 calls traded. All right, and if I want to know time and sales, I can go back to time and sales. And now I can actually look at the June 16 calls. I want June. Or I can just go by volume and I'll see where the June 16 calls were. And it looks like it was all call buyers. And there you go. I mean, that's about, um, in terms of the, the main live all product, they have other things and other features they're building, position manager, position uh, builder, right? 
The other piece is that this data is then filterable into Excel. This is not that. And I can open and I can decide, you know, I can write whatever I want in here. I can look at CCJ and it'll pull in the data. That's what we're doing with Live Bob. And there you have it, folks. That is in half an hour everything that you need to know about Live Bob. All right. I hope everybody has a great day. Uh, and I will talk to you soon. I will take questions.